Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. Even the phrase meaningful work, it makes no sense. Because the meaning's not in the work or not. It's in how you relate to it or not. So in other words, there's no such thing as meaningful work. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. This episode starts a new four-part series exploring meaningfulness. We all experience meaningfulness from time to time, but what exactly is it? For such a universal phenomenon, it's surprisingly difficult to pin down. So in this series, we'll break down this cliche and overused word and turn it into something more concrete and attainable, starting with a definition. I offer weekly member webcasts and teach live courses on clearandopen.com because I believe with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you, too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open up the podcast app, click the podcast cover art, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. I'd appreciate that very much. Thanks so much for listening. Let's dive in. One of the most cliche, overused, and oft talked about things in work cultures these days is meaningfulness, right? Everybody wants meaningful work. Create a a meaningful workplace, a values-driven workplace where people can find meaning. What the hell does that mean? What is meaningfulness? You know, we think about having like a meaningful moment with someone or a meaningful retreat or a meaningful conversation. What does that mean? What does meaningfulness mean? That's not rhetorical, right? Nope. (laughs) That's an inquiry. I think it means connection. Okay, nice. All right. Connection. That's a good place to start. So when there's an experience of meaningfulness, we feel connected to what or who? Um, I just want to clarify, is that, is it sometimes you, a synonym for um, fulfillment or is that slightly different? Well, I would say that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's related. I would say that a person who experiences meaningfulness is more likely to be fulfilled or you could also say a, f- a fulfilled person has a meaningful life, but let's let, let's not complicate it. What what a meaningful life means? That's a bigger question than, than what meaningfulness means. Okay, so I'm going to take a stab at your your non rhetorical question of, <laughs> of connecting what, connecting what. I'm I'm going to s- connecting our self interest with someone else's. Nice. Okay. So when the self-interest of when the self-interest of two people mutually overlaps, it creates meaningfulness. That's kind of, that's I guess that's what I'm suggesting. I just just came yeah, to me. It's, I like um, that. That's cool. That's cool. Where both people are being served and or nourished or fed in some way at the same time, and that produces meaningfulness. Uh huh. That's cool. I like that. What else? What else about meaningfulness? What does it mean? We all experience it from time to time, right? Is that funny how we can't readily describe what it actually is? It's also a felt sense. I think it's going to be a little different for each person. Sure. Absolutely. But it is a universal aspect of the human experience, so we ought to be able to define it. You know, it's like love. It's, it's totally subjective in one way and totally universal in another. I mean, it seems perfect because Jamie and I are working on really pounding out a vision, mission, and values for for my company, our company. Mm-hmm. One of the things I always say is we're trying to provide meaningful days for people with developmental disabilities. And cool. what does that mean? And 
like Tiffany said, I think it's different for each person, but I think with the core for me that it comes down to is that they feel like they're a valuable member of a community that they contributed to something greater than themselves, I guess. Oh, okay. Okay. You just came across a sort of buzz term. That's a, an asterisk moment, something greater than themselves. So there's a sense of, let's, let's connect that to Tiffany's connection. There's a sense of connectedness to something greater than themselves. I'd say that that's a key feature of meaningfulness. What else? More, more in the self-interest arena, um, being seen, being understood. Okay. Sense of, I like how you're on, you're bringing, Peter's uh, representing self-interest in this conversation. That's good. Someone has to. So there's a sense of being seen, understood. There's a, um, the person is getting to what? I think they're being recognized. They want recognition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Recognition is another piece of it. So look at all the things we've talked about because it's a lot being seen, understood, recognized, connecting to something bigger than themselves, connecting to others, a mutual self, a mutual serving of self-interest. That's a lot of ingredients for meaningfulness. And now let's come at it another way. When people talk about meaningful work, is the meaning in the work? It's in the doing of it. Say more. It's in how you relate to the doing of it. Aha. Now we've moved from content to context, you see. Yet think about for a moment how many people there are in the world right now telling themselves that they don't like their job and they want work that's more meaningful, whether they use those terms or not. Because fundamentally, the, the only thing clear and open really is about is about engagement. It's all about solving the problem of disengagement. One of the roots of the, of the problem of disengagement in a workplace is the absence of meaning. So and people are looking to their employers to provide that meaning. And that is the opposite of where, you know, I keep, as you're talking about this, I keep thinking of uh, it has to be on how you relate to it, because what meaning would I have if I was just sweeping the floors here or all right, what meaning do I have when things are going really bad? Like, did I have a meaningful day <laughs> when things have been so damn difficult? Mm. In the content, maybe not. But contextually, if, if I know my purpose, and I believe I do, then whatever I did during the day to get paid could have meaning if, yeah. if, I'm, if that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. And using, like you always say, use your job for your self-interest. Well, that would be my self-interest. So we're looking for our jobs to provide meaning. And that's, it's, it's how we relate to our job is where we find the meaning. Yes, the context of the job, not Michael the content. Gerber, I think Michael Gerber talks about this in the E-Myth in the story about um, the hotel manager. He talks to Michael Gerber about his... Uh, the boss's philosophy of work and life, as I recall. Yep. And how there's, I forget the quote, but something like there's no such thing as a, like a boring job, but yes, the, the, the worker has to bring the meaning to it in some sense. I think yep. that's what he's Yeah, project. that's, I believe, the same chapter where it talks about the workplace as a dojo, which was something, of course, I loved at the time and still yep. do. Yep. Dojo literally means place of enlightenment. Right. Which which means that you know that's the the, the secret of of internal martial arts that that um, you know quote unquote real martial artists really get is that it's about everything except for martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> People who train martial arts because they want to you know be strong and you know be able to defend themselves. It's like you can learn how to defend yourself very effectively for ninety nine percent of all situations in about three months. You just study the right art the right way, maybe six months. Doing it for years, the likelihood of actually needing to defend yourself is absurd. So what are you spending like, you know, four, six, eight hours a week training? So that's the, uh, the, the irony of it is that people are always focusing on the content rather than the context, right? They, they're looking, they, even the phrase meaningful work, 
it makes no sense, right? Because the meaning's not in the work or not. It's in how you relate to it or not. So in other words, there's no such thing as meaningful work. There's just, there's such a thing as a meaningful attitude or a meaning, a meaning, a, a meaning practice or a meaning work, meaning based practice, something like that. You see? So this is another way of saying what I've been saying for a long time, that the role of a manager is to help the employees see how the job is in their self-interest, how the job can be an expression of their values. In other words, how to make it meaningful. Now, some aspect of the job is going to be meaningful at the level of content. You know, I like teaching stuff. So when I, whether I'm showing somebody like uh, anybody, uh, a, a knot fan, I love teaching people cool knots. I, I'm not great with knots, but I know about a half a dozen and I love showing people cool knots, like the better bow. You know, that part when you're writing, when you're uh, making a bow, like on, on a shoelace, when you go around and you make a loop and then you go around it. If you go around it twice, that's the better bow will not become untied. So cool. I love showing people the better bow. Now, I'm not passionate about knots. In fact, I kind of suck at them. But the knots I do know, <laughs> I'm pretty good at. And I love blowing people's mind and go, hey, do you want a way to tie your shoelaces in a way that will make them never come untied ever again? Let me show you the better bow. I'm going to try there. that. When I was a Boy Scout leader, I, was, I kind of felt like I was the knot guy. There were literally five, five basic knots that, that was cool to teach, uh, teach new Boy Scouts uh -huh. because they were very useful. Yeah. We're specific to a particular task. Mm -hmm. Also, a uh, key knot, just while we're on the subject, trucker's hitch, really cool for clotheslines. So meaning, there's the meaningfulness in the content of what I do. I like explaining stuff, finding different metaphors. My God, if I didn't enjoy finding different ways to talk about the same thing, I would have had to retire this a long time ago because all I do is talk <laughs> is come up with different ways to talk about the same thing. So thank God it's interesting for me to like, you know, like, you know, when I'm having my morning beverage, I think about, oh, what about this metaphor? Oh, what should I do? It's interesting for me. Cool. But that's not what makes it meaningful. You see, that's what makes it like engaging at the level of content so that I don't get bored. What makes it meaningful is it gives me a venue where I can practice my deepest, most deep, most deeply held values. That's what makes it meaningful. Otherwise, that content stuff it it doesn't last forever. It doesn't, it's like, uh, it's not high enough octane fuel to keep you going. Cause uh, there's going to be mornings where your head is foggy and you know, the way you set a nail or the way you come up with a metaphor or the way you fill out a form is just not lighting your fire that day. What's going to get you through that day? Only your deepest held values and your relationship to your most deeply held values. Like, do you actually, have you committed your life to them? So meaningfulness, in other words, is the responsibility of the individual. You see how radical responsibility applies here? Think about the number of employees in the world. Hundreds of millions of workers in the world right now, all saying to themselves, this job sucks. This is not meaningful work for me in whatever way they're saying it. And all of them are unbelievably irresponsible in the way they're saying that. They're playing victim to the work. And that is why we live in a world of mediocrity. Because basically you've got two possible orientations. You can find a job whose content you minimally like and then do it and then expect the meaning somehow to find you, the meaningful moments to find you, or you can actively pursue and create, in a sense, that meaning. How? How do you do that? Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening.
and bye for now. <laughs>